Mohamed Buhari says all necessary measures have been put in place to ensure that the October 10 gubernatorial election in Ondo State is peaceful, transparent and credible. Well, the president gave this assurance in a message to party supporters at the grand finale of the All Progressives Congress campaign for the Ondo governorship election. He assured the electorate of adequate security to forestall any breach of peace by unscrupulous elements. President Buhari asked the electorate to turn out in mass to vote on Saturday without fear of molestation. The president commended the, the natives for their support and the way the APC conducted its campaigns. He says he's optimistic that Governor Rotimi Akredalu will be re-elected. All right, joining us now for more on the upcoming governorship election in Ondo State uh, is Samson Itodo. He's the executive director of Yaga Africa. You, you were... Uh, Tell us about the role you played. Of course, you were at the Edo State election that just got, uh, was just concluded uh, a while ago. Tell us the role that Yega played, the challenges you faced, and what you intend to do better in Ondo State. Well, thanks, Indy. You know, Yega Africa is a non-profit organization that works on elections. Um, for the Edo elections, we deployed um, long-term observers across the 18 local governments um, to monitor developments ahead of the elections. And we also deployed a parallel vote tabulation, um, which is um, a statistically and technology-based form of election observation that aggregates um, information on the conduct of elections and results. And the PVT verifies the accuracy of results declared by the Electoral Commission we were also involved in supporting the National Peace Committee um, on the peace accord that was signed by all the political uh, parties and the candidates in that election. Um, so those are the things that the IGA Africa did um, in the elections, geared towards you know, de-escalating the tension in Edo State, but also providing oversight on the process using citizens observers who were deployed to sample polling units. And we did verify the outcome of the um, Edo elections because the INEC official results fell within um, our PVT estimate, um, estimates. Uh, and so we, we did verify that the Edo election was a reflection of the votes cast. Um, for the Edo election, we're even deploying more observers, um, about 600 observers to um, the 18 local governments to a random sample of polling units. We're deploying the PVT. Um, for this election, and the PVT um, is a standard tool that is used um, for election observation. It's been used in over 50 countries. We've used it in the um, governorship and the presidential elections, and it's the only tool that can independently verify the accuracy of results um, in the elections. And for this election, um, we are deploying it, and if the results declared by INEC from this election does not fall out, that falls out of our margin of error, it means the results have been manipulated, they've been tampered with, and the PVT will detect it and we will expose it. So our duty is to provide citizens oversight on the electoral process to ensure that voters are given the opportunity to exercise their franchise and their votes count, but also calling on other stakeholders in this election to ensure that they play the game by the rules. We were also part of the Peace Committee um, support um, to the peace process and we are watching, we are holding the candidates um, you know, to account for, um, for their commitment in the peace accord. But we are also very, very disturbed by the pre-election violence um, and just this afternoon we issued our, uh, our pre-election statement highlighting the concerns that we have um, in this election. And I can go on to mention you know, three key concerns that we have. Um, the first is about the fact that the pre-election environment has been defined by, um, you know, um, gangster politics and, and, and violence. The campaigns themselves, you know, we've seen, you know, thugs uh, being deployed to intimidate supporters and also candidates. And so far, the fatalities that have been recorded are about three. Three citizens have lost their life in the build-up to these elections. And it's unacceptable and more worrisome is the fact that we have not seen you know, an intentional attempt to curb this impunity and recklessness um, displayed by pol armed political talks you know, and their sponsors. The second point is also around the logistics for these elections. In the Edo election, as at 8.30 a.m. on election day, 
our PVT findings really revealed that only 4% of polling stations had commenced accreditation and voting. And 8.30 is the actual time accreditation and voting is supposed to start. But if polling officials don't deploy early to the polling unit, there's no way accreditation and voting will commence early. And one of the reasons why there was late commencement was the fact that you had NURT, the National Union of Road Transport Workers, the drivers who were relied upon by INEC to deploy materials, you know, come up on election day trying to renegotiate their contract terms. And that's a contractual ag agreement between NURT and INEC. Um, or some of them just claim that they are unable to fuel their vehicles and so they cannot deploy. And we have called the attention of INEC because INEC is relying on this NURTW. And for a Ondo that we know for sure that some of the uh, members of the NURTW, you know, had pledged um, and endorsed some candidates in this election. We are concerned um, that that political endorsement puts their neutrality and integrity to question. Uh, and their ability to manage you know, the deployment of election materials or supporting INEC um, without any form of partisanship. That's a huge concern for us. And we've called on the security agencies and INEC to arrest and prosecute any NURTW driver who on Saturday decides you know, to undermine the process and not deploy. And we've also urged INEC to ask the drivers to deploy 24 hours before the elections. Let them deploy to the registration area camps. Spend their nights there. So by 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, they would ferry you know, the, the INEC officials and the materials to, to the elections. The other point was around you know, the logistics in what we call notorious blind spots in riverine communities of Ilaje and Eseudo. We know that these two local governments historically have been avenues for subverting and undermining elections, non-compliance of election guidelines, and also the threat you know, to INEC officials, because those are the riverine areas, and you have to use the boat you know, to deploy materials. And we know what happens in those places. And we've called on INEC and the security agencies to ensure, one, maximum or adequate oversight on the conduct of elections in those places, and also any deployment of materials to those places, the same way it was done in Akoko Southwest, in Edo, which is a riverine area. Voter turnout is a major source of concern. It's quite a mixed bag in this election. There's enthusiasm on the part of the Edo voters to vote, but there's apprehension, you know, caused by this pre-election violence. And, and Sam, so let and me so ask hope, you, you know, yeah, I mean, the role of the peace accord, a lot of people are hailed uh, the peace accord process in the Edo elections and, and in the outcome. Uh, do you think that that would and could sustain you know, any moment of truce that we are seeing at the moment in Ondo State. As you have rightly said, uh, the campaigns have been mad uh, by vandalism, thuggery, disruption of campaigns. But do you think that the peace accord will hold uh, the truce? I'm very optimistic that the peace accord, you know, being a public um, commitment that the candidates have made, um, will will de-escalate the tension and um, and you know be, will be an instrument of accountability uh, because like we say if at the end of the day or building to the elections the candidates do not uphold their commitments the public commitments that they made before God and the people of Edo, of Ondo State. It means they are not worthy of the vote of the candidates, um, of the, the vote of voters. And voters should actually, you know, keep an eye on these candidates and how they conduct themselves. But it's going to go beyond the peace accord. It's also going to go to INEC on how INEC manages this election with utmost sense of dignity, impartiality, professionalism, and excellence. It's very, very important that INEC conducts this election um, with recourse to consistency in the application of guidelines, if there is perceived, um, you know, injustice um, and an attempt by INEC to subvert the process, it's going to trigger a violence because this is a highly competitive election. Secondly, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has a critical role to play, and our expectation is that he will call on the Inspector General of Police and the other um, officers and security agencies to refrain you know, from any form of partisanship 
provide the adequate security that is required. Yesterday, the campaigns ended, and those campaigns where we saw governors from other states, you know, using vitriolic rhetoric All right. and trying uh, to incite Sam violence. Sen, we hope that uh, the president will call these governors to order. Yeah, Sam Singh, you told the president, uh, as E.D. Yaga, Africa, thank you for being on the program. The president, of course, has uh, giving assurances that the election will be free and fair Always and a delight. credible. Yeah. Uh, on his virtual presentation during uh, APC's uh, last campaign.